up guys? Today's video, we're gonna discuss why being average is over. And it has been over for a long time. And we're gonna discuss the previous video a little bit more in depth in talking about the point that I was trying to make. And before we get into all that, shout out to all of the new people and your well-constructed, logical comments. I really appreciate that. Every day I wake up to some of the most amazing comments, some like two or three paragraphs long, something you actually watched the video and you actually left a comment based upon what you saw. You guys have very high reading comprehension skills because a lot of you guys get me. I've got a few people who are dissenting, who are trying to extrapolate the data and come up with their own spin because they're just stupid but the majority of you get it. So I really appreciate you guys and shout out to the credit plug. Came in and weighed in. The credit plug was the only one to put in real numbers. And I'm gonna to explain to you why he did that. All right, so let's get into average. Now I had some people leave comments like I said, please, I don't have my wallet on me, but if you could show me anywhere in the video where I said, don't invest, I will pay you a thousand dollars. I didn't say that. My grand consensus, my thesis is 90% of America will never get rich through investing because 90% of America doesn't have enough money to invest in a meaningful way. It's simple math. If you're in that top 10%, Dave Ramsey's investment advice works for you because you have the money. But if you're in that bottom 90%, it's not going to work. And also, I've done some research. You know when the average person starts saving investing? Not at 20, which would open up the door for the 40 year window. The average person starts investing and saving and putting money away at the age of 35. So that wipes out the 40 years, that literally wipes out the 30 years because if you start investing, uh, well, if you start investing at 35 and you invest until you're 65, that opens up the 30 year window, right? But here's the thing, and I saw some people in the comments, and once again, shout out to the credit plug because he put in the most meaningful context of the discussion because my thesis is you're not gonna get rich anytime soon, if ever through investing, because you don't have enough money to properly invest. I will tell you a little story. Years ago, when I was saving 50% of my income, I was in the stock market and I amassed a $1.5 million portfolio in three years. It wasn't because of appreciation. And we're going to talk about that because some people put in their compounding interest. Okay. If you're talking about stocks have compounding interest, you're financially illiterate. Stocks don't pay interest. Stocks pay dividends and stocks reinvest a stock back into more stocks. That looks like compound interest, but it's not compound interest. How does the stock price go up? The value of the company goes up. That's not compound interest. I know, you know, and once again, if you could prove to me that a stock going up is compound interest, I would give you a thousand dollars if you could prove that to me. See, there are many of you who listen to the Graham Steffens, the Meet Kevins, all of these guys on YouTube, and you regurgitate their content without doing your own independent analysis. So you don't know what the hell you're talking about because you are a parrot parroting a parrot. Compound interest has nothing to do with the stock market. Nothing. What you do is like, once again, let's take Apple. When Steve Jobs was alive and Steve Jobs was pushed out of Apple, Apple wasn't doing that well. No one knew that Apple was going to become a $3 trillion company. Therefore, appreciation of its stock. No one knew. Uh, Amazon. They were laughing at Amazon for many years because Amazon did not make a profit because they kept reinvesting the profits back into growing Amazon into what it is today. So once again, if you are an average 
person in the United States of America, if you're an average person with an average salary, you will never become rich through investing. It's just simply not going to happen. And here's the thing. And I saw some people in there who were putting in their, their perspective. Uh, one gentleman, he says he's about hit, hit his first million investing and he's about to be 62. Sir, I guarantee you, you don't have average income. I guarantee it. And this is something that is missing. And I'm going to, and I already let the people know in the last training that I'm going to create something brand new, a mentoring to help you. Because he here's the thing. You've got to become exceptional. You cannot be average. You must become exceptional. And I, through the analysis of my life, I've become exceptional. And I'm going to teach you how to become exceptional because if you, because this is what everyone's looking for. Everyone is looking for the hack that allows them to remain who they are as a person and not change and leverage a little bit of money or a little bit of time into a huge payday. And it can happen. I'll tell you a story of what happened to me. I used to be in the storage auction business and I bought a unit for $1. The unit contained a safe and the safe contained uh, estate jewelry, a few guns, Morgan silver, Morgan silver dollars, and a hundred African cougarans. So that one dollar matriculated. There's there was no compound interest. That one dollar investment turned into potentially if I had sold the cougarans because I still have them, I would have made over two hundred thousand dollars. Right. So it can happen, and this is where we come with the possibility syndrome. I've had many people say, you can invest and become a millionaire. It's possible. My dear people, you haven't done it. You haven't done it. How do you know? Because I'm going to tell you something that's really um, uh, insight into my life. I have a lot of rich friends and the conversations that we have are very, very different than the conversations that you have with your non-rich friends. Case in point, my previous neighbors, they paid cash for their house and they were comfortable telling me that because I was driving a Porsche. So they knew that I made money. And we were one day, we were over there and they were just talking because uh, they're really friendly people and they, she loves to cook and she's always trying to feed me. And we were just talking about how much money it takes to live. Since their house is paid for, their cars are paid for, and she's like $2,500, maybe $3,000. And th this is something that once you get to a certain level, you will see. Once you get away from, let's call it bill land, you've got student loan payments, you got car payments, you got credit card payments, you have loan, you have all of these payments. Uh, if you don't have all those payments, like, I, once again, you know, my lifestyle is rather expensive because I moved here. My monthly burn rate is about $8,000 per month. But if we were to remove me living here because I, I got rid of the house and I'm renting and the rent ain't cheap. But if we were to remove this rent, I could get by on $3,000 a month and my health insurance is $450. My life insurance is 430 and after that, my car insurance is kind of a grip because I have three cars, it's 635. And cell phone and you know, after that, the bills drop to a hundred bucks a month. Like my electric, my electric bill is like 75 bucks a month. So. If we remove this rent, if I lived in a house that was paid off, I could get by with $3,000. And this, this is one of the secrets of rich folk. When you get to a certain economic level, i.e. you can get your house paid for. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Dave some kudos. Dave's program will work for you. If you, number one, stay out of debt. Number one, that, that's, that, I have a video. Debt is killing America. Debt is exploding. 
that is the biggest barrier between you becoming wealthy. Debt. Because essentially, like right now, I'm in a problem. And you know, some people's like, you know, they was talking about Dave Ramsey and I got to unsubscribe because you got to, what if, in the last few months, what have I been trying to sell you guys? What product or service have I mentioned in the videos? I haven't been selling nothing. I have not been pointing people to any of my websites because I'm revamping the business. So I'm not selling nothing. Once again, people will extrapolate the data and I'm going to say something. Uh, there's a lot of people who are jealous because I'm doing well. And once again, in my life, I will tell you a little story. I had a friend and this is a long, long time ago. This is when I had a job and I was selling commercial office furniture. And I had a friend, you know, in a, we had, and th these days are gone, where I could literally just drop by their house whenever, because I knew them, I knew their schedule. And one day I just dropped by in my brand new BMW 540, and that friendship ended. You know, we had a good little visit, so I thought, and then before I left, he said, Nita said, you need to call before you just pop up. I said, okay, my bad, my bad. And that was the last time I ever talked to him. So. When I say that people are jealous, I lost a friend, someone I knew in person, I knew for many years, we used to live together because my economic situation dramatically improved. So when I say that you motherfuckers are jealous, I am not being, because I can see it in the comments because you know, you got a course to sell. Uh, selling courses ain't easy. <laughs> you wish you can do it. But you can't because you're not exceptional. And this is the whole point of this video. With Dave Ramsey, if you get your house paid off, you get out of debt, and you put 15% away, you will be fine. You will be fine. You will not be rich. And one of the reasons, because Dave has a segment called Everyday Millionaires. Now, I'm a big, big, big uh, observer of messaging. Everyday millionaires indicates everyday people and everyday people indicates average people. And I've listened to the Dave Ramsey show multiple times and none of these people who are becoming everyday millionaires are debt free people. They're, they're not average. I've heard, heard like, he'll ask him like, what is your income? Oh, between us, 140. $140,000 a year is in the top 10% of income in America. At $140,000 a year, you take 15%, that's gonna be about $1,700 per month. The Dave, Fam the Dave Ramsey formula works very well at $150,000 per year. It works very, very well. But at $30,000, once again, get your house paid off, get out of debt, and put the money away, you will be okay. You will not be rich. You will not be an everyday millionaire. And that was my contention because uh, one of the things I consistently see with the Graham Stephen, Graham Stephens, me, Kevin, uh, Andre Jack is investing is going to make you rich. Now let's take Graham Stephan. Where does he get his money? Does he get his money from investing or does he get his money from YouTube? I guarantee you the majority of Graham Stephan's wealth has come from YouTube, not investing. Same thing with me, Kevin, same thing with Andre Jack. Same thing with any of these YouTube financial channels, because um, I, I'll give you a little insight. Hustlers Kung Fu is still on the financial algorithm. And I only had like 40,000 views because I haven't posted on there, over there that much because next month I'm going to be posting a lot more over there. Um, I made 1200 bucks. There are people with YouTube channels that get a million views a month because they're not in the financial sector who will not make 1200 bucks this month in YouTube money. So I'm telling you, these guys are not getting their money from investing. They're getting their money from pimping investing advice. <laughs> they're not making their money from investing. And one of the things that going back to, you have to be exceptional. I've listened to the Dave Ramsey show. Once again, all these folks who are calling, they're exceptional. But here's the thing. I have listened to the Dave Ramsey show 
and routinely someone will call in saying I make 140 I make 250 and I remember he was having this conversation with someone who was 45 years old that had a 3.5 million dollar portfolio based upon what I know this person did not have average income and at the end he made like he said he did like 250 250 so <clears throat> the Dave Ramsey advice will work for you it will work for you even if you're not having high income because um, I have some friends who live in a million dollar house they pay cash for their cars are paid for and they said that it takes them twenty five to three thousand dollars a month to live because they don't have all of these major bills. You have car notes, you have credit card payments, you have student loan payments, you have you have so many payments. And this is something that I have noticed because once again, when you don't have a lot of bills, it doesn't take you that much to live like where I'm at. It's kind of expensive, but if I got rid of my rent, because I'm renting right now, I could get by on $2,500 per month, you know, with my health insurance, my life insurance, and all this other stuff. I could get by pretty cheaply, pretty cheaply. So one of the things, and this is one of the hidden secrets of the rich, is that when you have a lot of money, life is cheaper. When you have a lot of money and you have good credit, you get the best interest rates. Life is cheaper. And once again, a lot of you were coming in with some funky math because I, once again, I'm a business owner. I crunch numbers for a living. I have to crunch numbers correctly. If I don't, it's going to sp uh, spell doom and gloom for my business. And a lot of y'all got some funky numbers like men lie, women lie. Numbers don't lie. You cannot push these numbers. I know for a fact that $300 per month at 20% is not a million dollars in 20 years. And I saw some of you kind of allude to that because the possibility syndrome. And here's the thing. I've been an entrepreneur for, um, I started at 32. I've been an entrepreneur for 23 years, which is seven years short of the 30 year window. 30 years is an incredibly long period of time. Long period of time. Long period of time. And once again, I'm gonna contend that if you're an average person with average income, you will never become an everyday millionaire. And that, that's, that's one of the things that got me with Dave. Everyday, re, like once again, I'm a YouTuber. And I'm gonna tell you something about messaging. Everyday millionaire. You hear everyday millionaire. What do you hear? You hear an average person becoming a millionaire. Here's the thing. None of these people who have become millionaires are average. They're not average. They don't have average income. I was looking at my credit report and I saw something that, that kind of caught my eye. My payment history is exceptional. Now, this is what's funny. The vast majority of my cards, I don't use. So I'm not making payments. And it was just like, that's pretty interesting. But once again, um, these people are exceptional. They're not average. They're not everyday. They're not normal. These people are exceptional. And the messaging has been dumbed down to convince you as an average person, because once again, Dave Ramsey sells things. And this is part of his marketing message to induce someone who will never, ever be a millionaire to partake in his course, to buy his products. And once again, what Dave Ramsey um, puts out is not going to harm you. If you go ahead and get out of debt, that's not going to harm you. If you go ahead and pay off your house, that's not going to harm you. And essentially you could go through the Dave Ramsey's program, not be harmed, realize financial benefit, but you will never be rich. This is my big, this is my bone of contention. 
The messaging is that investors make more money than business owners. And I, I'm going to admit something because someone left a good comment talking about if these people cannot save $2,000, they don't have the discipline to run a business. I 100% agree. I 100% agree. If you can't save $2,000, you don't have the discipline to run a business. 100. You, you don't have the discipline to run a business. You don't have a discipline to put $300 away for 30 years. 100% agree. Because here's what happened to me. Just like I used to be an average person with average thoughts, average abilities, and average income. And life was hell. So what did I do before I became an entrepreneur? I fixed my money management problems before I started making more money. This is why I give this away because a lot of people are once again messaging the Graham Stevens, the uh, me Kevins, and they they make they don't make their money from investing. They make their money from YouTube. Their investments compared to their YouTube income ain't squat. Ain't squat. And one of the things is, is messaging. Once again, hear me and hear me well. If you're hit over the head every day, become an investor. There are many YouTube videos that says that literally say, don't take your money out the bank, don't put your money in the bank, invest, 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 invest. You're hit over the head with this messaging. So if you were not to dive deep into the situation, you would erroneously assume that investors make more money than business owners. I have a client who owns a $100 million company and he Last year, he took out 1.7 million in draws. He bought, you know, he's playing the corporate game quite well. And this guy owns six investment properties. Why does he, you know, because he, he, he literally owns four of them outright. Why is he such a good investor? Because he's a good business owner. Business owners make the best investors because they have the money. Like I said, um, once again, the camera actually stopped, so I may have repeated this, but you know, years ago I was in the stock market and it took me three years to put 1.5 million in the stock market because I was saving 50% of my income. 50%. And also, I may have brought this up, but I'm gonna bring it up again. There are many of you who's like talking about, um, I'm trying to sell something. I want you to go back and look at the videos starting from when I changed the thumbnails to the black thumbnails with right writing. I have not been selling nothing. I've not been selling. Uh, I was like, hey, go to these courses. Actually, I've actually given away some stuff. So I'm not selling anything. And that, well, it's again, that is jealousy. Uh, maybe I've told this story, I don't know. But jealousy, a lot of you are jealous. And th this is one of the reasons that Many of you don't have wealthy friends, like my neighbors who told me they paid cash for their house. They felt that I was on their level. So they were open and they shared things to me that they would not share with you. And this isn't to say that you're a bad person or nothing. It's just once the thing, one of the things that you realize is when you get wealthy and you do well in life, you will get haters. You will get people who will just hate you for doing well. That's it. It's just like pretty girls. There are some girls who are stunningly beautiful and women hate them because they're beautiful. These girls did absolutely nothing to anyone, nothing. And they're hated because they're beautiful. They're mistreated. They're talked. Uh, I used to date this girl, blonde, green eyes, beautiful girl. And the thing she used to tell me how people treated her just because the way that she looked. You know, she said, we'll be in the meeting and I would say something and I would be ignored because of the blonde hair. I mean, it, it, it was it was a thing for her. And one of the things that I want to tell you is with that video, and I may have said it before, but I'm going to say it again, that you as an average person with average income will never be rich. 
No, it, it's just not going to happen. And this is one of my bones of contention with Dave Ramsey, because when you put everyday millionaires, the messaging denotes that average people can get rich doing simple things. And once again, Dave Ramsey has a $60 million company. He sells things. He has a lot of people on staff. He has a lot of people to feed. So the messaging, and once again, like I said before, nothing that Dave Ramsey puts out would harm you or leave you in financial jeopardy. Nothing that he would put out. So uh, one of the things is being average. Now, it used to be a time in America when you could be average and get ahead. This was before 1971. 1971, before my Uncle Martin left Alabama, went to Detroit, Michigan, started working for Pontiac, and became solid middle class without the high school diploma. Those days are over. They've been over. They started disappearing in 1971, 1980, they started to really disappear in 1990. They were gone. They were gone. So the days, because once again, this is what everyone is looking for. They're looking for something that allows you to remain who you are, doing what you're doing, and to show appreciation in your life and income. That's what, that's the hack. That's how you're being sold a lot of this stuff. And I'm here to tell you it ain't gonna work because you know, I saw a good comment. I'm like, this is one of the only YouTube, financial YouTube channels that tells you the truth. Because once again, stocks. Stocks are sexy. And I'm gonna tell you why stocks are sexy. Throw money in it, sit back and wait, make money. You don't have to do nothing. And see what I'm talking about, because I look at who I used to be. I used to be an average person with average income, living an average American life. And that life wasn't that good. I had to change, number one, who I was as a person. Then I had to change, number two, my behavior. Then I had to change, number three, the way that I looked at money. I used to think money was scarce. Money is not scarce. Collectively, uh, people are, you know, this video, I don't know, this video may get six, 10,000 views. Collectively, if this video gets 10,000 views, everyone watching this video probably has collectively 50 to $60 million. So money ain't scarce. And that's something that I used to think. See, money is quite abundant. What is scarce? Creating a financial device that serves people, because like, once again, I'm thinking of doing this credit repair business. Like I said, I'm thinking because uh, I'm doing my research, I'm doing my analysis, and it's a lot to it. Because one of the things I know with the credit repair is there has to be a consultation and we have to look at your credit reports before we give you a price. Because some people have really, really bad situations. Because uh, right now I'm working on 20 people's credit, uh, seven of them, I'm about done. And they're very happy with the results, but their credit wasn't that jacked up. The people with the bankruptcies, the people with the repossessions, the people with the collections, the people with the child support, the people with the bankruptcy, uh, that's proving to be a bit challenging. And you know, uh, there's ways to get that stuff off, but it's gonna take time, it's gonna take more effort, it's gonna take more resources. So the worse your credit is, the more that I would charge you because you're gonna have to do way more work, way more work. And this is one of the things that I'm looking at because here's the thing. And once again, to the person who said, and I 100% I, I, I agree with you. If you can't save $2,000, you don't have the discipline to run a business. You will have no argument with me on that, none whatsoever. However, let's go ahead and look at me. I used to do payday loans. I used to do pawn shops. I was one of the worst financial, I was financially illiterate. I didn't understand money. I didn't understand how it works. And that's something that I had to fix before I became an entrepreneur. I had to fix that. Cause you know, when I was homeless and I was looking at, cause you know, 
when your life sucks, you keep asking why. And then you, 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 you got a few situations. You can go into a situation of blaming everyone, being pissed off, being angry, or you can get into deep self reflection and figure out where you went wrong. So I got into deep reflection and I figured out where I went wrong. There was people that I wanted to blame, but once I became 100% accountable and realized that the reason I was homeless, I didn't have a savings account. And I fixed that. That was the first thing I did. And then many of you erroneously to believe that if you start making a whole bunch of money, all your problems are gonna disappear. No, if you're tricking off 30,000, you're gonna trick off 30, 300,000. It's same behavior. So I had to, once again, change who I was as a person, change my behavior, change the way that I looked at money. I had to fix all of that first. And then one of my best skill sets is I can hold on to money. You could give me $100,000 and I can hold on to it. I don't have this urge to spend money on all this stupid stuff. I just don't. Um, essentially, this month I have spent maybe $1,000 on some stuff. Maybe, I would have to look because I haven't really spent that much money on stuff this month. And one of the things that you have to understand is you cannot be average and get rich in America. I know that this is what all of the everyday millionaires, that's once again, that's one of, you know, everyday millionaire denotes that average people can get rich. And once again, looking at some of my friends who are rich, they actually kind of come off as humble, normal, regular, everyday. And I was like, Vanessa, all right, I love you to death, but you live in a $2 million house. That ain't normal. You you drive a Porsche. That ain't no. I mean, they, they come across as such down home, normal people, which is somewhat of a protective mechanism. Because once again, when people find out that you're doing well, because I was talking to the Michael, and he's like, his mother comes in town, and she's like, what do these people do? And she says they do pretty much normal stuff. They have businesses. They have jobs. Because when people come visit me and they're, they're rolling through the neighborhood, they're like, what do these people do? And once again, you know, I'm going to probably do a video on this. You know, I'll talk about it a little bit. Dinner with Jay-Z or $500,000. If you don't take that $500,000, you are a damn fool. Because uh, one of the things that people feel, and this is a big, big problem, that someone could tell you some esoteric information that will change your life. I can go ahead and sit here and tell you exactly what to do, and it will not change your life unless you take action. I can tell you exactly what to do. I can lay it out. I can lay out a blueprint, but here's the problem. And this is one of the things that I saw in the comments. No, very few people in the comments who are investing have become millionaires. You haven't done it yet. So how can you speak to what hasn't happened yet? And then, you know, my video, uh, black money, <laughs> the comments I'm getting over there. Uh, I would say 90% of the comments are positive and 10% of the comments. Uh, I haven't gotten called a coon yet, but you're full of self hate because I have the audacity to spell out what I see what's wrong with the black community. I, I, I'm full of self hate because I'm this whole thing with love. But once again, you cannot be average and get rich in America. And one of the things like Nate and Kara, they have a YouTube channel. They are travel YouTubers. They're not average. These people conceivably could be making 80, $80,000 per month. And they live in a van. They choose to live in a van. They choose. They're not average. Bob Wells, he chooses to live in the van. He makes about 15, 20,000 a month from YouTube. Not average. So once again, you must go from, and this is one of, this is the training that I'm going to drop off in February. 
how to become exceptional. And because once again, I used to be just like you, normal person, normal job, doing my thing, right? And I know the pathway that you must take. And once again, you will have to work on yourself. You will have to work on yourself. Um, I let the people know in the last training session that I'm going to start this new training portal and it's not going to be nowhere near as expensive as my corporate products. So it's going to be more affordable for everyone, but being average is a slow and painful death being average. You know, uh, you can only get so far being average. And once again, I will contend if you're the average person in America with average income in America, even if you invest, you will never be rich. You will be doing better because essentially, like I said, Dave Ramsey stuff, it's not going to financially harm you. It's not going to put you in a bad situation. However, everyday millionaires, that just kind of sticks in my craw because the messaging and once again uh, when i get to the intellectual property school messaging is huge because i've been talking about starting a business and i've been saying those painful words you're looking at a two to three year process two to three year process and everyone here else on youtube is having you thinking that you can do this new high income skill and quit your job in 30 days and have time and money freedom statistically the number, the income numbers don't bear out. The income numbers just simply don't bear out. And w once again, you know, if you're going to be average in America, let me tell you what's going to happen. Being average puts you in the position to be globally reset because you don't have what I like to call financial surplus. Um, to tell in my entrepreneur life, I had to close down my storage auction business because my partner was to develop colon cancer and I got sick. And then when I had a heart attack, nothing changed because it's how things are set up. So we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff because a lot of you, uh, oh yeah, a lot of you have hit me up for credit. I like, all right, first of all, thank you. I appreciate the confidence. Thank you for that. But I have the YouTube business. I have an online course business. I have the consulting business. I have the car rental business. I'm doing the I don't have time to chit chat with you on the phone for free. I'm just going to be straight up with that. I just don't have that time to explore and to talk and to chop it up. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. So what I'm going to do with this new thing is a mentoring thing. And it's, you know, like once again, I tried it and I had a feeling it wasn't going to work, but I put it out there because you don't know until you expose it to the marketplace of group coaching. No one was interested. People want to talk to me one on one. And once again, I don't have a lot of free time. Time is the only luxury that we have Kanye West. So I cannot be sitting there because a lot of people is like, hey, how can I contact you? How can I email you? You want to talk to me for free. Um, Glennon Cameron doesn't talk to people for free. That is something that I am known for. You know, once again, there's about 30, 35,000 new people here. You don't know me that well yet in time. You will get to know me. And one of the things that people don't seem to understand or to acknowledge because they're not entrepreneurs. This is why I love dealing with successful entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs. They're on time. They understand busy because they're busy and their communication reflects that. If you're not an entrepreneur, you don't know that life. I mean, I've had people uh, just randomly get my cell phone number and they just send me a number like, hi, you know what I do? I immediately block that number. Hi, because essentially it's like, hi. And then it's like, I'm supposed to go, hey there, what's going on with you? and back and forth. And there's like essentially in the th um, messaging thread, there's six or seven stupid, dumb responses that are, I'm like entrepreneurs. Like when I used to cold call people, I would get straight to it. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. Your name is Ed. I hear that you're moving and we have a salute. Boom. First 30 seconds. I would not dance around and hi and chit chat and war. Entrepreneurs don't have time for all that. 
get to the point. Get to the point. Don't be playing around. Like uh, right now, I'm selling a lot of stuff online and I have people, uh, essentially the people who try to smooth, they're scammers. Cause it's like high, you know, they want, they're scammers. They're pretty much scammers. So one of the things that we're going to do in the new mentoring program, cause uh, I'm gonna put it up and what's gonna happen is the training will be on Sunday after Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, who's your Super Bowl pick? Who do you think is gonna be in the Super Bowl? Uh, maybe the Kansas City Chiefs again, which would be three years in a row, very interesting. Uh, I actually had a, I was thinking the Buffalo Bills were gonna do it until they ran into Kansas City. So we will see, and there's no Tom Brady and there's no Bucks to uproot Kansas City, so we will see. And Matthew Stafford, who's just won his first two playoff games in his whole NFL career. That, that's a dark horse. LA Rams is a dark horse, and they've been to the Super Bowl before, so we will see. But yeah, I'm going to set this training up, and also there's going to be nice t-shirts, maybe a nice hoodie, and I, I gotta come up with the name, I gotta come up with the messaging, because for all you folks who are like, you don't understand what I do. And uh, I, I'll speak on that just briefly. What I do is I create a YouTube channel and then I create a product around that YouTube channel and I sell that product through that YouTube channel. This is why uh, I'm gonna bring Disruptive Mail back. I'm going to bring Savage Finance back. And um, one of the things that I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna delete a lot of videos off these the channels because I got channels that are already monetized so it makes sense to put this uh, whole thing on a monetized channel and I'm gonna bring disruptive mail back. Um, I got a whole thing like, you know, February is gonna be a very, very busy, busy month. February is gonna be a busy month and I got a lot of stuff to do and I'm gonna do this new training and I'm going to uh, make it founders, you know, just give me a little time, but this is gonna happen after Super Bowl Sunday. I'm gonna probably put it together, put the courses and trainings and stuff, because essentially, I'm really good at selling stuff on YouTube. Really, really good. And once again, uh, I'm not selling anything at the moment, <laughs> which is which is kind of funny, because I get people, oh, you're selling? Because I just have, a, you know, I have to mention it, I have to create the right messaging, and I'll be, like I said, there, there's so much training. It's like right now, I got so many things that are going on that, one of the things I've learned is to focus on one thing, get it done, then move to the next thing. And that's one of the things that I'm focused on. I got a big, big project that I'm working on right now. So once again, you know, I, I really appreciate the well-constructed, grammatically correct comp. You guys, I love you because this is way better than the junk and the garbage that I was getting last year. Uh, a lot of you guys are intelligent. A lot of you guys are well-spoken. A lot of you guys are thoughtful. And once again, when I attack a sacred cow, I get people who get all <laughs> up in their feelings, man. They get all up in their feelings, which is cool. But once again, uh, the Institute of Economic Thought was one of my better ideals because last year I had a few ideals that didn't potentially work, didn't work. Well, I don't know. Because I feel one of those ideals is one of the reasons that this channel took off. I, I actually think there's a strong correlation between that. But yeah, guys, you cannot be normal. You cannot be average and make it in America. The average is over. So let me know your thoughts and opinions. And once again, I get all this together because I got a lot of people who are asking for mentoring, who want to speak, who want to. Once again, I really appreciate you guys, but I don't have the time to message you or talk to you on the phone. I, I simply don't have that kind of time. And even if I did, I wouldn't do it because that is not scalable. And this is something that we'll be talking about in the corporate game. Cause like I said, I got a whole bunch of stuff that I'll be working on, but let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.